So speaking of the studies, so you you ran a trial. Um, so could you could you talk through that trial? Which is, I mean, it's really good that you ran a, a trial. <laughs> you, you ran this trial. So did you did you run it, or did you kind of did you get a university to run it for you? Or how did that work? Yeah. So this was done. It was a university that ran the trial for us. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was a double blinded placebo controlled crossover study, um, which is as far as a you know a clinical trial design goes is a is a gold standard design. Um, so it was obviously double blinded. So the the researchers carrying out the trial and nor the participants knew um which one was the placebo and which one was the real thing. And it was twenty eight people that were enrolled in the study. And um, when I say it was a crossover study, what I mean by that is that quite often, so, you know, it, a study will say, oh, we've got 28 people, but actually the reality is oh, they'll be split in half. And, uh, you know, 14 of the people would take the placebo and 14 would only take the real thing. Because I was a, as was a crossover study, it meant that every single participant took not only the placebo, but also took the real product and mm-hmm. um, so for example they were split into two groups half the people started on the placebo then had a washout period and then took the real thing the other half started on the real thing then had a washout period and then took the placebo so it's a the reason that that's a really good study design is it means that every person is their own control so rather mm-hmm. comparing like two groups of different people and going oh well all these people on the placebo had this effect and all these people on the real thing had this you know, you're not comparing to the same group of people are physiologically different. Whereas this study design means that you can literally look at every single person and go, well, that is a, that that same person, that is their level on the um on the placebo. And that same person, this is what happened when they took the product, obviously when it's been and blind and blinded in the <laughs> end. Um so yeah, so that was the study. Um, it was 28 days. So um, it both uh, took the, the the real thing for 28 days, the placebo for 28 days. There was a, a six I think six week washout in between um, to make sure that any effects had, had gone down, um, especially in the people doing the real thing first. And um, it, we, we measured lots of different things. So the, mm-hmm. the primary thing to measure was NAD. You know, we wanted to show, does this actually boost NAD? <laughs> um, and luckily it did. Um, we also actually wanted to not only look at, did it boost NAD at the end of the, the, you know, the 28 days, but what was happening and, you know, how quickly does it boost NAD? Mm-hmm. So we actually measured the participants' blood Um, they were done we asked them to do them at 7 14 um 21 and 28 so every week um Mm. and uh, again you could see that after just seven days there was a significant increase in nad levels um and this continued to rise um throughout um the 28 days the other things we wanted to look at were okay we're boosting nad but what we want to know that our approach our different approach is actually working in the way that we've designed it to um, so we measured levels of NAMPT enzyme um, and found again in um, 28 days that there was an increased level of this um, enzyme within the cells of uh, the subjects. Um, we also wanted to measure the sirtuins. So we haven't really talked about the sirtuins, but the sirtuins are um, quite famous in the world of NAD, and that is because they are... Um, uh, proteins that essentially use NAD again as a fuel to switch on many pathways that have been shown to improve all around cellular health. So not in terms of longevity, but metabolic health um, have, have many different um, beneficial downstream effects. Um, and one of the worries always is, is that, you know, you've just discussed, like, is NAD actually going towards <laughs> the situation? So we measured that as well and showed an increase there. Um, we also looked at um, inflammation. Mm-hmm. Again, we want to be sure, are we actually, um, it's very hard to measure if you're actually definitely inhibiting CD38. So a good um, mm-hmm. proxy to, to measure is, are you reducing inflammation or are you increasing inflammation? Um, and again, what we see is that we saw a significant reduction in, in multiple different inflammatory cytokines. We also looked at um, glycated serum protein. So this is a measure of um, 
basically as you generally as people get older a lot of the proteins in their blood um will be sticky and stiff with um because they have sugar molecules um irreversibly bound to them this is a process called glycation uh, which we know is very troublesome in the aging process it can cause stiffening of arteries um it causes problems in the skin uh, along with many other things and again we demonstrated that we saw a reduction after 28 days um, in the levels of glycated um, proteins um, in, in the blood. Um, and finally, the other thing that we'd also measured was, was biological age. Um, we wanted a, a way to show, you know, just that overall we were affecting the health and the longevity and the health span of the cells. Um, and obviously biological age testing has become very popular. Um, it's also something that consumers can do themselves, um, unlike Measure NAD themselves. So we wanted to include something in our study that was just a bit more relatable for the average consumer and also something that they can possibly, you know, take upon themselves to buy a kit and measure at home. Um, so we measured biological age and we found a reduction by 1.26 years in the 28 days and that was on average across all of the participants when taking the supplement. So I would like to go back. There was a couple of things that I wanted to go back to. So one is uh, you had uh, people from like 18 to 50 or something like that. I mean, it was quite a yeah. wide range of participants. 20 to 80. 20 to 80. Ah, brilliant. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't suppose you had enough people to be able to see whether there was a different impact depending on the age. Yeah, so we had around, it was, I think it worked out, we tried to get it. So it was about three or four people from each decade mm -hmm. um, so that we can actually do those investigations. I think that's not that's not enough people to reliably right. look at what impact it's having at each um you know at each age group. Uh, in the future, I would love to get some you know do some studies um that that are looking more at that the effect in in different ages also between male and female and um, things like that. But I think that you know that is a, a, a key thing as well about our study. We actually used it was fairly it was a risky approach um to use such young people in a study looking at nad um usually um the clinical trials that have been looking at boosting nad with supplements are done in males aged around 55 to 65 um a very specific group usually um not healthy so obese or metabolic disease or some issue um where you are likely to see an effect because they are generally much more depleted in nad um, but for us, again, as a consumer company, I was very passionate about making this trial something that was more reflective of the average population, because I think that's a huge, you know, mm. drawback in a lot of clinical studies is that they're not reflective of the population. So we actually use both men and women um, and also um, a, a much broader age range. So for us as well, the fact that we saw the results that we we we, we got with that population of for the study um again just just proves that we are we're doing something right there <laughs> yeah that's in interesting I, and it would be great to see uh, how it how it, it the impact was would be different over different rate, age ranges yeah. um for the biological age i believe you use glycan age so uh, can you say why why did you pick glycan age over a, perhaps an epigenetic age or yeah, so glycan age, um, for people that aren't familiar, is um, a, a biological age test. It works by measuring the um, levels of, um, of, of um, basically sugar molecules that are attached to our IgG, our immune cells. And these patterns of sugar molecules change over time. Um, and there's been some huge population studies now done to demonstrate that you can almost like measure the different patterns and predict the, the biological age of that person and um, quite reliably. And uh, this is different to a lot of the test kits, which you look at epigenetics. So this is like mm. methylation patterns on the genes that also change in a, in a, in a way over, over time. Now, we, we could have used either of them. Uh, the reason that we did use um, the glycan age one is it just seems to have um from from some of the studies and data that i've seen seems to be more responsive to changes in the lifestyle 
um mm -hmm. therefore a good way of tracking um if you are you know if you are making an intervention um to be able to actually measure and pick up the change that it is making um and as we knew that we were doing a study that was was relatively short you know not like three or six months we needed mm -hmm. to have a more you know something that would be sensitive to um the change in in a lifestyle factor essentially um, so that is why I chose that. I also mm -hmm. believe in the scientists behind that company. I have seen all the work that they've done and, you know, I'm very confident um, in, in their approach. Um, so that is why we chose that one mm -hmm. um, over some of the other ones that were also available. Right. Yes. Uh, we did talk with Professor Lautz uh, at one yes. point about uh, the glycan age. So if if I'm taking Nuchido at what time plus at home, what can I look at? I mean, th there are some tests for NAD sort of in, in the blood, but I, I'm not sure how, how accurate they are. So would I maybe look for a reduction in inflammation? Is, is there anything you could look for at home? Yeah, so there are companies that are claiming to measure NAD. Um, personally, I've not been convinced by the data that, that they present um, just because we know that NAD is very unstable. Um, you know, we've run tests in our own lab looking at the stability of NAD in blood and, you know, left the blood out in on in different like room temperature and ice and different things and look at its degradation and it degrades really fast. Um, and I've not been convinced by any companies that have been able to show me evidence that they've got over that degradation issue to allow someone to put a blood sample in the post and send mm -hmm. it off, which is unfortunate because for us, it would be amazing to be able to have our customers do something like that and actually see their NAD mm -hmm. levels go up. And um, so this is why we use um, biological age testing instead. Mm -hmm. um, we, you know, we do recommend to our customers go and if you're going to start and you really want to be tracking changes here, do a biological age test beforehand, do the glycan age test, you know, do a different one, do an epigenetic one, whichever one you, you choose. Um, we know that NAD has such an impact on all of the hallmarks of aging. We'd be pretty confident that we'd see, um, you know, a, a different, the same response in a, a different test. Um, inflammation, um, look at measuring inflammation. Again, we know that uh, our product does reduce inflammation. So the things that you, you could get done, um, bloods with the doctor, obviously no one's going to be going to the doctor and going, can you measure my NAMPT levels <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. Um, but we're, we're doing some other studies now, you know, um, because the more that we, obviously the, the that initial trial, so we actually started that trial back in 2019 um, and it got, it got stopped because of COVID and then it had to be restarted. So we haven't planned for it to take this long to get it out there, um, but it did. Um, but now we're doing other studies based on a lot of customer feedback of, you know, how do our customers feel uh, when, when taking the product? And um, one thing that comes back time and time again is improved sleep. Um, and these are people that are tracking it with Aura or with um, Whoop Band, for example, tracking the HRV. So we're actually doing a study where we're, we're gonna be measuring this and hopefully getting some data. Um, because again, that's something simple at home that lots of people may be able to measure themselves um, and see that it's it's having an improvement. Um, so yeah, that's that's one that people don't usually think about when they think of NAD, but NAD is actually very um, influential in controlling our circadian rhythm, which is our 24 hour sleep wake cycle. Um, it switches on um, some key genes that actually make sure that that 24 hour rhythm keeps flowing as it should. Um, so again, in people where NAD has gone down, that rhythm isn't as strong and it can disrupt a huge amount of things, not just our sleep, um, but a huge amount of processes that are controlled by our circadian rhythm. So are you, pla so you are planning to publish the paper. Um, do you have any idea when it will be published? And I mean, have you considered putting it in bioarchive or something like that kind of before it's so peer reviewed? 
Yeah, well, we've we've just gone, you know, a huge thing with with us is we are a consumer company and we want to put out evidence that is um, is peer reviewed because that is very important to us, that that has been accepted by the scientific community and is not just us saying it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that is why we've gone straight in for publication. Mm -hmm. we, it, it's in publication now. It's being reviewed so it's how long is a piece of string some reviewers oh. are super quick and they'll come straight back other reviewers it just takes ages we're hopeful that it'll be out soon um but yeah it's it's the review process and just waiting for that to actually happen right okay yeah um yeah we don't really have time I, i'm just not very familiar with how the re review how long the review pro process can take Sometimes um, it's super quick. I've had papers yeah. that have literally been submitted and come back and we're like, yeah, straight, it's getting published. Others, you know, that just just take a long time. Um, it depends on if there's any edits to be made, if, you know, further mm -hmm. information, anything like that. We just don't know what will come back 